Now that we've got a quick introduction to simplified connection diagrams, displacement diagrams, and clock notation, let's see if we can interpret a couple different representative examples of three-phase transformers and call it a day. Consider a YN D1 configured three-phase transformer. Let's first dissect the naming convention. The high voltage side is a Y with a neutral. The low voltage side is delta configured, and one o'clock means the low voltage side lags the high voltage side by 30 degrees. Now let's draw the displacement diagrams. The high voltage side is Y configured. It's the reference. Draw it as you would a regular Y configured phasor diagram, only point it straight up. The low voltage side is delta configured. The low voltage side line to virtual neutral lags the high voltage side by 30 degrees. Draw it as a triangle, so the reference line to virtual neutral voltage tilts at 30 degrees, kind of where one o'clock appears on an analog clock. Let's take a look at the simplified connection diagram for a YND1 configured three-phase transformer. Now don't stress out too much about drawing simplified connection diagrams from scratch, since only the meanest instructor in the world would ever make you do this. <laughs> Wait a minute, let me pause the recording for a second and cackle maniacally as would Dr. Doom when he turned Wolverine into a vegan. Anyways, don't stress out too much about drawing a simplified connection diagram from scratch because again, only the most sadistic of instructors would make you do that. But do stress out about the proper interpretation of an already constructed simplified connection diagram. Most of the time, you'll have a simplified connection diagram on the transformer nameplate available and it's up to you to hook it up exactly as illustrated with zero points being awarded for creativity. This being said, it is a worthy exercise to consider how phase shift occurs between one side of a transformer and the other. The simplified connection diagram for the Y configured high voltage side looks exactly like you'd expect, where the non dotted ends of the three high voltage windings are tied together to form the central neutral connected node of a Y. The simplified connection diagram for the delta configured low voltage side necessitates some explanation. Whereas the Y connections tie together the similar ends, i.e., all dots or all no dots, delta connections tie together the dissimilar ends in a continuous ring and then the line-to-line -line voltages appear at the connection points. A YND1 configuration looks like this. A no dot to B dot. B no dot to C dot. C no dot back to A dot. A to B to C back to A. If we were to expand this out as you would for some eye-pleasing schematic, the YN configured high voltage side would look like this, with all non-dotted ends tied together and the delta configured low voltage side would look like this. A node dot to B dot, B node dot to C dot, C node dot back to A dot, with lower winding lowercase a between lines one and two, lowercase b between lines two and three, and lowercase c between lines three and one. Let's say we're again making use of light industrial 120 volt line to neutral, 208 volt line to line, 60 hertz three phase AC, and a transformer the one to one turns ratio. High voltage winding capital A gets mapped to low voltage winding lowercase a with no phase shift, such that the line to line voltage between line one and two on the low voltage side would be 120 volts at an angle of zero degrees. Similarly, high voltage winding capital B gets mapped to low voltage winding lowercase b with no phase shift. Thus, the line to line voltage between line two and three on the low voltage side would be 120 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees. Finally, high voltage winding capital C gets mapped to low voltage winding lowercase c with no phase shift. Thus, the line to line voltage between lines three and one on the low voltage side would be 120 volts at an angle of 120 degrees. Note my dramatic overemphasis of the term line to line. A YND1 configured transformer is effectively taking the line to neutral values of the high voltage Y and making them the line to line voltages of the low voltage delta. Those with an intimate understanding of three-phase AC and phasor math will immediately spot why the 30-degree phase shift occurs between the Y-configured high-voltage side and the delta-configured low-voltage side. For those failing to spot this connection, allow me to illustrate by the way of magic, or more appropriately, math magic You'll no doubt recall there are two different styles of voltage in three-phase AC systems, line-to-neutral and line-to-line. -line. For the Y-configured high-voltage side, each winding experiences the comparatively smaller line to neutral voltage of 120 volts with a respective phase shift to 120 degrees between each phase. 
If we wanted to, we could also calculate the line-to-line -line voltages of the high-voltage side. We perform the following calculations. Line 1 with reference to line 2 is 120 volts minus 120 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees, which yields roughly 208 volts at an angle of 30 degrees in brown. Similarly, line 2 with reference to line 3 is 120 volts at an angle of negative 120 minus 120 volts at an angle of 120, which yields roughly 208 volts at an angle of negative 90 degrees in orange. Finally, line 3 with reference to line 1 is 120 volts at an angle of 120 minus 120 volts at an angle of 0, which yields roughly 208 volts at an angle of 150 degrees. If you wanted to, you could reposition the line-to-line -line voltages on another phase diagram so they all point from a common origin like this. However, for today's purposes, it's probably better to stick with our original diagram, simultaneously illustrating line-to-neutrals and line-to-line -line voltages. The phasor diagram clearly illustrates our reference line-to-neutral voltage arrow in black would be pointing right here. Viewers will note the line-to-line -line voltages are square root 3, or roughly 1.73 times the line-to-neutral voltages, and still exhibit a relative phase shift of 120 degrees between each other. Viewers will additionally note the line-to-line -line voltages lead the nearest line to neutral voltages by 30 degrees. Make note of this fact because we're going to be using it in reverse on the low voltage side. Speaking of the low voltage side, let's do the same thing for the low voltage side. Given we're using a transformer of the 1 to 1 turns ratio, low voltage winding lowercase a between lines 1 and 2 experiences 120 volts at an angle of 0 degrees. Winding lowercase b between lines 2 and 3 experiences 120 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees. A winding lowercase c between lines 3 and 1 experiences 120 volts at an angle of 120 degrees. Interestingly enough, these aren't line to neutral voltages anymore, but rather the line to line values given the delta configuration. Can you dig this on every level that I do? Again, a YND1 configured transformer is effectively taking the line to neutral values of the high voltage Y and making them the line to line voltages of the low voltage delta. If we use a transformer with something other than a 1 to 1 turns ratio, we could also step them up or down. However, for today's purposes, it's probably just best to illustrate the consequences of phase shifting only, something you may not be familiar with yet, rather than rehashing magnitude change, something you're probably sick of by now. To determine this new configuration's line to virtual neutrals, these little guys on the inside for the delta configured output, one could perform the reverse calculation of our previous procedure. If the line-to-line -line voltages are roughly 1.73 times that of line-to-neutrals and lead the line-to-neutrals by 30, it stands to conjecture that the line-to-neutrals are 1 over square root 3, or 1 over 1.73, or roughly 0.577 times the line-to-lines, and they lag the line-to-lines by 30 degrees. Doing so yields roughly 70 volts at an angle of negative 30 degrees, 70 volts at negative 150 degrees, and 70 volts at 90 degrees. Check it out. The reference line to virtual neutral for the delta configured output lags by 30 degrees, hence the 1 o'clock designation. All right, let's try this whole exercise again, this time making use of a YND11 configured three phase transformer. Let's first dissect the naming convention. The high voltage side is Y configured with a neutral, the low voltage side is delta configured. 11 o'clock means the low voltage side leads the high voltage side by 30 degrees. This is kind of a repeat of the last example, only now the low voltage side leads the high voltage side by 30 degrees rather than lagging it. You should find some similarities between this and the last example and important differences. Let's now draw the displacement diagrams. The high voltage side is Y configured. It's the reference. Draw it as you would a regular Y configured phasor diagram, only point it straight up. The low voltage side is delta configured. The low voltage side line to virtual neutral leads the high voltage side by 30 degrees. Draw it as a triangle so the reference line to virtual neutral voltage tilts at 30 degrees, kind of where 11 o'clock appears on an analog clock. Let's take a look at the simplified connection diagram for YND11 configured three-phase transformer. The simplified connection diagram for the Y configured high voltage side again looks exactly like you'd expect, where the non-dotted ends of three high voltage windings are tied together to form the central neutral connected node of a Y. This is identical to the high voltage input of our previous YND1 example. Let's now take a look at the simplified connection diagram for the delta configured low voltage side. As with all delta connections, it still ties the dissimilar ends together, dots to no dots in a continuous ring, only this time it does so in reverse order. 
This is what induces the 11 o'clock or 30 degrees leading shift as opposed to the 1 o'clock or 30 degree lagging shift of the previous Y and D1 example. A no dot to C dot, C no dot to B dot, B no dot back to A dot. As previously, if we were to expand this out as you would for some eye-pleasing schematic, the YN configured high voltage side would look like this with all no dotted ends tied together, and the delta configured low voltage side would look like this, A to C to B. You recall the previously examined YND1 transformer went A to B to C. Let's see how the reversal affects low voltage secondary output for a YND11 transformer. As previously, high voltage winding capital A gets mapped to low voltage winding lowercase a with no phase shift. Where's winding lowercase a now? It's between 3 and 1 this time, only it's being used backwards. Similar observations can be made about windings b and c. Lowercase b is between 1 and 2, backwards, and lowercase c is between 2 and 3, also backwards. Dig what's going on in this configuration? Line to line voltage from 1 to 2 is the inverse of b. Line to line voltage from 2 to 3 is the inverse of C, and line to line voltage from 3 to 1 is the inverse of A. Cunning indeed. Given we're using a transformer with a 1 to 1 turns ratio, line to line voltage from 1 to 2 is the inverse of B, or 120 volts at an angle of 60 degrees. Line to line voltage from 2 to 3 is the inverse of C, or 120 volts at an angle of negative 60 degrees. And line to line voltage from 3 back to 1 is the inverse of A or 120 volts at an angle of positive or negative 180. When you assemble these phasers end to end as you would a delta, it looks like the low voltage secondary output voltage reference to virtual neutral is tilted 30 degrees in advance, i.e. at 11 o'clock of the primary high voltage inputs as you'd expect for a YND11 configuration. As a means of verifying this, we can calculate the line to virtual neutral values given the understanding that line to virtual neutrals are one over square root three or 1 over 1.73 or roughly 0.577 times the line to lines and lag the lines to lines by 30 degrees. Doing so yields roughly 70 volts at an angle of 30 degrees, 70 volts at an angle of negative 90 degrees, and 70 volts at 150 degrees. Check it out. The reference line to virtual neutral voltage for the delta configured output leads by 30 degrees, hence the 11 o'clock designation. All right, now that you're warming up to this nonsense, let's try a couple more illustrated examples at a higher rate of speed. Consider D, D, zero configured three phase transformers. All I want you to do is interpret the information given your understanding of three phase transformer nomenclature, simplified connection diagrams, and displacement diagrams. Let's begin our analysis by dissecting the name convention. The high voltage side is delta configured. The low voltage side is also delta configured, and zero o'clock means the low voltage side is perfectly in phase with the high voltage side. Let's now draw the displacement diagrams. The high voltage side is delta configured, so one will draw it as a triangle with a reference line to virtual neutral voltage pointing straight up. The low voltage side is also delta configured, so one will also draw as a triangle with a reference line to virtual neutral voltage pointed straight up. As we might expect, for a DD0 with no phase shift between the high voltage and low voltage side, the simplified connection diagram for both the high voltage and low voltage delta configured sides are identical to each other. A no dot to B dot, B no dot to C dot, C no dot back to A, A to B to C back to A. As with the identical simplified connection diagrams, the phasor diagrams for the high voltage and low voltage sides are perfect copies of one another, so as to the result in line to line voltage outputs are perfectly in phase with the applied line to line voltage inputs. Similarly, the result in line to neutrals for both sides are in phase with one another. Example four, let's do this in reverse. What if we flip-flop the low voltage side for the simplified connection diagram? Understandably, this would be a DD6 configuration. The high voltage side is delta configured. The low voltage side is also delta configured. Six o'clock means the low voltage side is perfectly out of phase with the high voltage side. As we demonstrated earlier, the high voltage side would be drawn as a triangle with a reference line to virtual neutral voltage pointing straight up. The low voltage side will also be drawn as a triangle with a reference line to virtual neutral voltage pointing straight down. The simplified connection diagram for the high voltage side of a DD6 transformer indicates a standard delta connection. Winding capital A is between lines 1 and 2, winding capital B is between lines 2 and 3, and winding capital C is between lines 3 and 1. As you might expect, the simplified connection diagram for the low voltage side indicates the low voltage windings are simply being used in reverse. Winding lowercase a is still between lines 1 and 2, only it's being run in reverse.
Similarly, winding lowercase b is still between lines 2 and 3, only it's being run in reverse. And finally, winding lowercase c is still between lines 3 and 1, only it's being run in reverse. As you might expect, the phasor diagrams of the high voltage and low voltage sides are opposite of one another, such that the resultant line to line voltage outputs are perfectly out of phase with the applied line to line voltage inputs. Similarly, the resultant line of neutrals for both sides are perfectly out of phase with one another. Alright, those last two were pretty easy. Consider DYN11 configured three phase transformer with a 1 to 1 turns ratio being supplied by a 277 volt line of neutral, 480 volt line to line, 60 hertz three phase AC system. Since I simply can't resist the temptation to perform a detailed phasor analysis of this system, let's all get on the same page. Given a delta configured input uses three wires and lacks a neutral, it'd ordinarily be foolish of us to use line to neutral values as a reference, but that option is available to us if it makes our work easier, and in this case it does. For this reason, let's consider line 1 to neutral to be 277 volts at an angle of 0 degrees, line 2 to neutral to be 277 volts at an angle of negative 120, and line 3 to neutral to be 277 volts at an angle of 120 degrees. Thus, line 1 to 2 would be 480 volts at an angle of 30 degrees, line 2 to 3 would be 480 volts at an angle of negative 90 degrees, and line 3 to 1 would be 480 volts at an angle of 150 degrees. As you might expect, the line to line values are roughly 1.73 times that of the line to neutral values and lead the nearest line to neutrals by 30 degrees. Let's begin our analysis by dissecting the naming convention. The high voltage side is delta configured. The low voltage side is Y configured with the neutral. The low voltage side leads the high voltage side by 30 degrees. Let's now draw the displacement diagram. The high voltage side is delta configured, so you draw it as a triangle with a reference line to the virtual neutral voltage pointed straight up. This is the reason I made the air characteristic decision to employ the line to neutrals as the reference, even though we're making use of a three wire delta configuration. Given an 11 o'clock designation, the Y configured low voltage sides line to neutral leads the high voltage sides line to virtual neutral by 30 degrees. You draw this as a regular Y configured phasor diagram, only tilted at 11 o'clock or positive 30 degrees. We've got this example still in front of us. The simplified connection diagram for a DYN11 configured three phase transformer might look something like this. The delta configured primary shows a continuous connection from A node dot to B dot, B node dot to C dot, C node dot back to A dot. Line to line voltage 1 to 2 at 480 volts at an angle of 30 degrees is applied to the high voltage primary winding capital A. Line to line voltage 2 to 3 at 480 volts at an angle of negative 90 degrees is applied to high voltage primary winding at capital B. And finally, line to line voltage from 3 to 1 at 480 volts at 150 degrees is applied to high voltage primary winding capital C. The Y configure primary ties together all the non dotted terminals at an accessible neutral. As with all scenarios, primary high voltage winding capital A maps directly to secondary low voltage winding lowercase a with no phase shift, capital B to lowercase b, and capital C to lowercase c. This configuration is effectively transforming the line to line voltage at the high voltage primary into line to neutral voltages at the low voltage secondary. Given a transform of the 1 to 1 turns ratio, the low voltage secondary experiences 480 volts at an angle of 30 degrees on low voltage winding lowercase a, 480 volts at an angle of negative 90 degrees on low voltage winding lowercase b, and 480 volts at an angle of 150 degrees on low voltage winding lowercase c. This quickly and directly demonstrates the reference line to neutral voltage at the secondary output leads the high voltage input by 30 degrees, thus the 11 o'clock designation. While it's not necessary to do so, while this example is still in front of us, if we wanted to, we could calculate the resultant line to line voltages at the secondary, with the understanding that they'll be roughly 1.73 times that of the line to neutral voltages and lead them by 30 degrees. Line 1 with reference to 2 at the low voltage secondary will have a value of roughly 832 volts at an angle of 60 degrees. Line 2 with reference to line 3 will have a value of roughly 832 volts at an angle of negative 60 degrees, and line 3 with reference to line 1 will have a value of roughly 832 volts at an angle of positive or negative 180. This goes to show you, even though you're using a 1 to 1 transformer, and even though this is called the low voltage side, connection can influence phase shifts such that resultant voltages are substantially amplified. 